earning season kicks off a week from today with Alcoa. One thing you're curious about as we head into this earning season? Personally, I don't have a great feel for it at this point. I, I realized when uh, I was watching CNBC this morning, they were talking about earnings season that I didn't have a great handle on mm-hmm. sort of the, the expectations. Whereas three months ago, I remember thinking, I don't think this is going to go very well. I thought you were going to say you don't have great expectations. <laughs> that seems to be kind of the vibe out there right now. Um, I noticed that. I mean, it seems like expectations are pretty low, and and maybe that's a good thing. I mean, maybe expectations are so low that it's kind of a low hurdle to clear for a lot of these businesses. It doesn't sound like the expectations for growth are all that high, but we know how that expectations game plays out. I mean, a company can announce earnings that miss expectations, but in the call, they talk about forward guidance and how they see a brighter day ahead, and the market can receive that. Positively, and it just—it seems like it's just a flip of a coin now these days. How how the market will react to it. Personally, for me, and it's just—I I look at all these share buybacks that have been going on, and so to me, it's just been very interesting to see how buybacks have materialized and how they played out for different companies. Uh, Costco is a good example of a business actually that we were just talking about in MDP recently, and that they keep on buying back shares. But but interestingly enough, their share count has gone up. With a business like that, that is one business where you really would expect that share count to be coming down. Um, Apple has has been buying back shares, and and I think they've seen a little bit more of a material impact on their on their share count. But I was looking back, just historically here, and if you look at the fourth quarter of 2015, the S and P spent 136.6 billion dollars in total on share buybacks, which was. Just a let me see here. It was about five, a little bit more than five percent over five percent growth from from the year before. If you go back to two thousand and eight, the fourth quarter of two thousand and eight, where the market was really really tanking. I mean, it looked like the world was almost coming to an end. Uh, I remember. Yeah, sure. I think we all do. <laughs> you don't have to look back too far. But but it's just interesting to see that share buybacks, the S and P share buybacks, they only spent about fifty billion dollars versus one hundred thirty six billion uh, here in two thousand and fifteen. Now, if you go one year past that, the fourth quarter of two thousand and nine, when the market actually started getting better, it, it, things were improving. They spent even less than fifty billion dollars on share back, buybacks, and so this all leads me to my greater point that. A lot of companies really suck at share buybacks, Chris. I mean, they don't do a very good job of You're it. You're saying the timing could be better. It could be way better. And if you look at this chart, it's pretty phenomenal to see that share buybacks actually track the market's performance pretty well. As the market goes up, they keep buying back more shares. That's kind of not what you really should be doing. Uh, and so I'd like to see companies boost the dividend maybe a little bit more. I mean, I know people like those share buybacks, but the share buybacks are still, you're still having to account for some market psychology there because while, yes, it should reduce the share count outstanding, there, there's a psychology at play that determines the share price still. The market is every day determining that share price, and it's not necessarily going to correlate. I mean, in theory, it should, but we know in practicality, it doesn't. Um, so for me, I, I'd like to see some some more dividend boosts here in the coming quarters, as opposed to these companies touting share buybacks because they can do those share buybacks, which can sort of artificially inflate that earnings per share number, which can then sort of artificially inflate the share price because of the multiple factor there. All in all, I mean, this is just a long-winded way of me saying, let's see some more dividends, guys. I wouldn't hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, mine isn't uh, nearly as broad as that. Mine is more so hoping the conclusion of a never-ending story um, comes to pass, and that's the Halliburton Baker Hughes deal. Um, uh, yeah. Obviously, they're not going to talk about it happening in the last quarter during the during the review. Is that thing still going on? <laughs> yeah, and a <laughs> negative I'm, press. I'm serious. I thought that thing yeah. was done. Negative it's a press big keeps deal. coming out. <laughs> I know a it's a big deal, <laughs> but I mean, my God, yeah. how much longer are we going to go? Well, the end of this month is is the point where Baker Hughes can officially back out of the deal. Um, <sighs> at April, yeah. So this is the last month of the deal terms. It can be extended between the two companies, um, but Baker Hughes could just say, you know what? It's been a year and a half. This just hasn't really gone according to plan. Obviously, we're going to take our three and a half billion dollars and figure out where to spend it. Um, and then Ang Bang sweeps in there and right. makes the offer for oil. <laughs> right. um, so that's. I don't think that they're going to 
maybe obviously they're not going to talk about it in the review, but I imagine a bunch of questions will be there um, during the call if nothing happens before then. Look, if Coca Cola <laughs> once upon a time can buy a movie studio, <laughs> it's it's no less insane that Anbang Insurance would swoop in and try and buy Baker Hughes. Speaking of Coca Cola, <laughs> did you see the Dr Pepper Snapple Group is upping their investment in that sports drink Body Armor? I think that's like a Kobe Bryant led beverage, but it was just very interesting to see. You know, you have Gatorade and Powerade; they've been kind of the one and two names in there, and and then this Body Armor drink is is apparently picking up some shares. Hmm. Just you see these big these big soda companies are trying to figure out ways to to not be so dependent on soda now. Soda's taking some serious hits.